November, we received notification from Ms. Ella Dangerfield that she wishes to formally submit a petition to Council that, amongst other things, asks the Council to declare a climate emergency. Ms. Dangerfield, would you like to come forward, please? If you'd like I would to come forward. And I'll just say to the returning members will be aware that the Council considered this matter at its meeting on the 6th of December 2018. And therefore, the six-month rule is still valid. However, I'm exercising my discretion to enable Ms. Dangerfield the opportunity to make a statement for a maximum of three minutes. Members, I must stress that I will not be inviting any questions or debate following Ms. Dangerfield's statement. Okay, so thank you. Yes, please. Hello, thanks for letting me speak for three minutes today. I am indeed here to hand in a petition. Um, here it is, asking the Council to declare a climate emergency. <coughs> the recent climate action, the youth strikes, have said it loud and clear that what councils, what the government, what the policies are doing is not enough to secure our future, the future of our children, the future of our planet. They're intricately connected. So as a mother of two small children, I feel deeply humbled by the youth strikes. I, I won't be able to look my children in the eye and say that I did nothing. I won't be able to do that. That's why I'm here today. There is a greater recognition of the need for urgent action. Parliament has declared a national climate emergency. Teambridge, Devon County, Totnes, Dartington, Plymouth City, they've all declared climate emergencies in their areas. There is a gaping hole where the South Hands is. Devon County Council have signed an additional paper that they will work with other agencies, including the police and health service, who also recognise that there is a climate emergency, to address this emergency. They outline an action plan and also plan for a citizens' assembly. Teambridge have signed a climate emergency with a target date of 2025 and have asked South Ham's District Council to join them. Now, I have nearly finished an environmental science degree, and the science is stark. It's robust as well. And it needs to be acted upon, because science on its own can't do anything. It needs policies and laws that underpin it, and that put it into action. There is also a precedent for this. I want to remind you of the 1987 Montreal Protocol, when countries from all around the world signed a treaty stopping um, ozone-depleting substances from being emitted into the atmosphere. Now, that was so successful that the ozone layer will, if it is continuing as it, as it does, if it continues as it does, it will have recovered by the middle of this century. Now, that is success that shows that where there is a will, there is a way. So, I urge you, for your children for your nieces, nephews, for your grandchildren and their children to take action, declare a climate emergency, improve the well-being of the people of South Hams. Thank you for listening. I'm entitled to move a notice without motion in accordance with part four of the constitution, part four of the constitution procedure, and it's clause eleven. And I wish to uh, <coughs> move a motion to change the order of business in the agenda, so that the urgent business at item fourteen 
and the business brought forward to item 19 be heard now. It is uh, an urgent matter following the presentation of this petition. Yeah. Under the Constitution, it, I am entitled to move this motion without notice, and I would ask that I be allowed to do that. One other point I'd like to make is that the Constitution, at Clause 28.3, requires the Council, when it receives a petition, to state what it will do with that petition. And therefore it is important that upon receipt of that petition, the petitioners be informed as to what the Council intends to do with that petition. Now presumably it will be referred to the Executive at its meeting on the 6th of June. That being the case, I think the Council should inform the petitioners that that is the case. And that is specifically stated in 28.3 of the Constitution, Part 4. So I'll go back to my original request. I would like to put forward a notice of motion under uh, uh, urgent business to uh, bring forward items 14 and 19. I'll second that, Jim. Right, thank you, members, for that. I'll ask our monitoring officer to respond, please. May I also raise one, just wait a second, point of order, please, which is actually the motion itself has already been presented to this council. I presented it Monday of last week, and I had a seconder, which was duly in Brazil, which was this very motion. I understood at the time that I would have 11 people would actually need to second it, and of course, we were at that point before any of the extra new members, anybody had actually signed their new membership. So chicken and egg, but the chickens and the eggs are all in the room now. And before we actually um, push that, actually um, move the motion, I understand that we have the right under point 411, I think it is, of the Constitution to actually um, ask those 11 people to stand up. We already have a number that I'm aware of in the room who would stand up and second that motion. So we do have the president in the room to actually call that motion. I think given what's going on here, and what, this is actually an emergency that we should actually give it a precedence. It's not going to do any more than give us a framework for looking at our work that we already do. Um, through you, Chairman, if I could deal with Councillor Hodgson's point first. She did, in fact, present a motion um, within time, but it was within the six-month rule. And my interpretation and my advice to the Council is that the 11 signatures need to have been presented at that time, and it wasn't. So therefore, that doesn't stand. With regards to Councillor Birch's um, request, and the motion without notice, that is a correct procedural um, request. And it's up to the Council, this has been seconded, it's up to the Council to decide whether or not it wants to change the order. So it would be on an order majority show of hands whether they, the Council would be prepared to do that. Can I speak to my motion, please? Can you speak to your motion? Yes, you can. No, no, no. Before members move to a vote, then I'm allowed to speak to it. And also, uh, the secondary is allowed to speak to it as well. So I think we should be allowed uh, to address the motion. And then, once uh, uh, that has been dealt with, then it can be put to the vote. Is that Yes. That, that's correct, Chairman. The proposal to, to in effect rejig the agenda whereby urgent business be brought forward under agenda item little two, if you like, is perfectly valid and related. Thank you. Chairman, may I ask a question, please? Um, do, do you not have to vote on whether you want it to be brought forward as an urgent item before you start the debate? Because at the moment we haven't. Um, voted on whether we would even like to have a debate. And the meeting hasn't started. I thought council wouldn't. voted to tell you what. So, do you need to vote on whether we change the order first? Yeah. So, as far as I understand it, the, um, we're asking Councillor Birch to, um, to speak on his rationale for, bringing, for, for changing the order of the agenda. Um, then there will be an opportunity for the person seconding the motion to speak, and then members may vote on that. Or there may even be a debate on it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, the reason why I want this item moved up to, uh, uh, on the agenda is the fact that the, the good people here have come to this meeting uh, uh, this afternoon and they've presented a petition and I think they should be given the opportunity of hearing what we have to say earlier rather than later because after all, this is an emergency. And it, as uh, uh, Ella mentioned, it is now recognised both locally and nationally that there is a need uh, for an emergency action in respect of the climate. And that has been evidenced by the presence here at this meeting of the petition petitioners. And <clears throat> coupled with that is the fact that uh, in the last couple of days, uh, this council has received uh, an email from uh, Teambridge, Teambridge District Council, and I will quote what it says. And it says... <clears throat> You will know that Teambridge District Council unanimously declared a climate emergency in April this year. We are keen to work alongside our neighbouring district councils and Devon County Council on the actions necessary to become carbon neutral across our area by 2025. Therefore, we'd like to invite you to join us by declaring a climate emergency in Southampton District Council. We look forward to your early positive response. So... Again, the need for urgency is the fact that uh, we have received an invitation from a neighbouring district council uh, to work with them on the important issue of a climate emergency. <coughs> so, we as a council um, need to... Uh, <coughs> so, I understand that on the, at the executive uh, meeting on the 6th of June, um, this uh, matter will receive, uh, that there will be a report dealing with the matter of the climate emergency. Um, in that, uh, earlier this week, I um, asked for an item to be dealt with under uh, urgent business, uh, and I wonder whether um, that uh, my wording can be put on the screen so I understand uh, where the reasons why I'm asking this to be dealt with by an urgent business. Can I just stop you there? Um, we need to establish that it is considered sufficiently urgent to talk about it now, <laughs> rather than later on in the meeting when it's supposed to be discussed. Well, I think it's in respect of all the people who are here now. Uh, they, otherwise, they will have to sit through loads of boring business concerning this council. And I think, you know, we owe, them, we owe these people the courtesy of getting on with the business that they have brought to this council, rather than subjected them to the machinations of this council's appointment system. So that is the reason I'm asking for it to be dealt with now, rather than later, as a matter of respect to the petitioners. Thank you. Well, perhaps you can explain why you invited them all to come early. No, no, I did not oh. invite them. To that is, that, I would ask you to withdraw that remark. I had nothing at all to do with the organisation. The fact is that I spoke to them before the meeting and I explained the procedure to them. I did not invite them here, so I would ask you to withdraw that remark, Mr. I'll Chairman. Withdraw, I will withdraw the remark then. Thank you. But it's been orchestrated by someone, I think. <laughs> no, rubbish! No, rubbish! No, rubbish! No, rubbish. No, rubbish. No, rubbish. Shame! Shame! Shame. No, people you saw are going to represent. We are learning. Mr. It's about time you did. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, you're not helping the situation. The fact of the matter is, the reason I have done that is for the reason that I've mentioned. I have not talked to anybody about it. The only person I discussed this with before the meeting was Cantra Baldry. I haven't discussed it with anybody else. So it is not orchestrated. It's out of common decency for the people who come to this meeting this afternoon. Thank you. 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 Thank you.